So in today's video I thought I'd give you guys a look at the paintwork that we've done on this Porsche and also a look at something that doesn't happen very often in our shop but no matter how good you are or how long you've been doing this job we all get problems with jobs and this just happens to be one of those jobs that I got a problem with. So I thought rather than show you guys a job that's gone really well and that's come out really nice I'll show you this one which is one that I had to re-blend the quarter panel on because I had an issue on the quarter panel which we'll get into a little later in the video. First we'll go through the paint side and then I'll give you guys a little bit of an idea of what I think went wrong and then also what I did to put the job right the next day. So the reason that we were painting this Porsche in the first place is it's been done at another shop somewhere um, in the past and all this quarter panel on this side and all the rear bumper had been painted and it was absolutely full of like dust in the surface of the paint where it hadn't been dibbed out properly um, and the customer since has had a tiny little bump on the rear bumper so when he came to me and he is a regular of ours he's got quite a few motors that he brings to us um, quite regularly I mean at any one time we've normally got at least one of his cars in having some work done to it whether it be one of his cars that he collects or whether it be one of his personal daily drivers like this one now where the primer is there it had a small little bump where i think he said his wife had just clipped a post or something in the car so we've done a little repair there and when we've done it i just wanted to sort out all the clear coat on this back bumper and also sort out the rough clear coat on that quarter panel now unbelievably as mad as it is, that is where my issue actually came with this car. The issue didn't come with the colour or the colour match or anything like that, but actually the way that I prepped the quarter panel to remove the dust nibs from that quarter. Now, normally we will leave a thousand disc a panel or I'll go over it with, say, grey scotch. Um, on this particular occasion, I decided to grey scotch that panel up and a thousand wet flat out any of the marks that were in that panel now normally obviously we use like the thousand discs um, I use thousand wet flat on this just to nib off the little high spots um, and then thinking obviously as I do with a normal job that when I blend my base coat I blend my base coat over um, a panel that has been thousand discs so I wouldn't see the issue because when the clear would go over that then obviously it would, my, you know, my blend on the panel would be okay. And then obviously the clear would eliminate any of those sanding marks within that panel. Um, and unfortunately, that is where the issue came in. Now, as you guys know, I paint a lot of cars and I've been painting now, um, 20 years now actually, um, I've been painting cars, which is quite mad because... Apart from in slightly recent times, um, just because of the virus and times being hard with business and things like that, and things have been really stressful in the world. I've, not that I've lost the passion for the job, but I've just been kind of getting really frustrated with some things um, business-wise and work-wise. But that's not going to stop me from progressing forward and keeping that passion alive for the job that I do love every day. But I am a very, very big believer in you can always move forward in the job that you do and you can always learn something new. Now, I've been doing this job, as I said, 20 years now and I have never once come across this problem or had this happen. So this is a case of sometimes the best way of learning is by making a mistake. Now, one of my favourite quotes that I heard many, many years ago um, it's, come a lot, it's become a lot more sort of prominent on social media and things like that these days is the master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried which is why I wanted to show you guys this, um, this job on this Porsche and also the issue that we had just to show you guys that we don't always get it right as professional painters there are times when we do a job and things just do not quite go right and we have to do a redo the next day or we bait the car off have to remask, reprep, and start all over again sometimes. It does happen. So it's a case of I want to show you guys that, you know, even though you guys look up to some of us YouTubers and painters as being 
you know, the best painters out there. We are just painters. We are nothing special. We are nothing fancy whatsoever. We still make mistakes. We are all human. No matter how hard we try, sometimes things just do go wrong. And it's those mistakes that you learn from. So if you're a DIY guy and a beginner at home and you're struggling with something, we have all been there. And I was actually watching Salvage Flippers the other day and he said that, you know, quite a lot of people look up to him but he's just painting in the shed, etc, etc. He's not got a perfect booth and that sort of thing. But we all started there at one point. You guys that watch us, um, and some of you guys that have watched me from the very beginning, saw me start off in a homemade booth in not the most ideal conditions. Then we moved to the Carcoon booth. And now, many, many, many years later, and a lot of hard years worth of work, we are now in our own booth, in our own shop, with a better setup. Not the most ideal setup, but it, it works for us on a daily basis. Like here on this bumper, there just happened to be a large nib in this rear bumper. So I'm just using a soft sanding foam pad just to nib that off. And then I'm going to tack rag that corner off and just put an extra bit of base over that just to get rid of that large nib in this back end of the car. And a quick little nib with a P800 softback sanding sponge, just to nib the top off that will help us get an, a much cleaner job when it's done, because um, that would have been quite a large bit of dust. When I did this car, it was about the time that the boo filters needed doing, um, so it, it was just on that sort of changeover period. So unfortunately, every now and again, you do get that large little bit of a nib, but a quick little bit of a blow over with a fresh bit of base coat like this, and you, you know, you've got no problem, that'll cover up straight away. And then we'll just put a last little bit of a blend coat around and we'll have no issues with that area. Now, as I said, the main issue for me on this car was the rear quarter panel, which I was re-clearing to get rid of a lot of faults. Now, what actually ended up happening was where I ended up blending up this quarter panel, there was probably about six or seven really big nibs in that quarter panel that are wet flat out and you can see um a little bit lower down in some areas like there there's two or three little bits there that you can see where i've nibbed off now the only issue that i actually had was where my blend went over one of those wet flat areas once i'd got all this clear coated up it just didn't disappear now i don't know whether the wet flat in a P1000 is slightly harsher than the P1000 discs, or I'd just done something wrong somewhere, I'm not quite sure. But, it, you know, and it could have been down to the fact that this has got quite fine metallics or pearls in it, so they just sank into those. But I can't think it'd be that because I didn't have an issue anywhere else on the car. But I now know myself that if I ever get a problem like that again, I'm just gonna thousand disc that whole panel rather than gray scotching it and do my blend and my re-clear over that and I won't have an issue because that's the way that I normally do it day to day. It just happens that on this day I'd run out a thousand discs. So I chose to grey scotch the quarter panel and just thousand discs the bumper out because the bumper was a lot worse than the quarter panel was. Plus the fact it was one of those days where I was also decided to crack the DV1 out for this one because I thought I'd make a fresh video using the DV1. And I was also using a completely different clear coat to what I've ever used before. Um, and it's a completely different way of painting to what I normally do. This is literally like you put a full coat down and then you put a half coat straight back over it. And then you walk away and it looks really nice. So I was really concentrating on what I was doing with the clear coat. Um, I was using DV1, which is a gun again that I don't normally use. Um, but I thought I'd crack it out and do a few videos with it to show you guys again on the channel. And it was just, I guess it was just one of those days and I was quite stressed out on this day. So somewhere along the line, I made the call to do that and it was a bad call. But as I said, from that now, you know, even though I have been painting 20 years, I have learned a lesson from that, which is that if I was going to do something like that again, I would either fully wet flat that panel down and just re-clear it without putting the base up it or I would thousand disc that whole panel um, and then do my blend over the thousand disc which obviously now I know is slightly finer and that's probably due to the fact that obviously with the DA it's got a random orbit rather than leaving 
straight scratches, so to speak. So it's going to give a finer finish on that panel either way. Um, the way that I actually rectified this the next day was I just put a quick bit of a poly sheet over the back bumper and masked the back bumper off to that line and the light there. I then put an extra tiny bit of base coat over this quarter panel just on the very edge where it met the bumper and where that small fault was with the base coat where those scratches were which you could probably see in the video in a second if you look closely. Um, you can see where them sanding scratches did not disappear on the very rear of this quarter panel. Um, and then I just recleared it, polished it up, and it was absolutely fine. So it was a very quick redo, and one of those really sort of simple, random mistakes that comes around once in a blue moon. Um, and I know I've been speaking a lot to Jan Chambers recently, um, a YouTube, another YouTuber. Um, he's just taken on his first respray and I've been trying to help and tutor him through some of the aspects of it and he's run into problems on the way and I've tried to say to him as well look don't let the issues bog you down and don't let the issues kick you a lot you know you need to learn from the problems and progress and use them as a stepping stone to learn rather than letting them knock you back in your confidence or what you know is your ability as a painter I used to be really bad for this. I'd get an issue with the car, then I used to think that I'm a terrible painter. When in reality, it was an opportunity to learn, not an opportunity to criticize myself. So these days, if I do get a problem, the way that I find the best way of dealing with it is to go home, you know, sit on the couch, get a takeaway with your partner, have a bath, chill out, come in the next morning with a fresh head and tackle the issue that you had from the day before fresh and ready to start the day and you'll find it so much easier and a lot less stress in your life so i hope you've enjoyed this video guys and this little problem we had on this car and i'll see you again soon for the next one bye for now